Hola, buenos dias, guys. John here, con baby Sri Lanka and me otro bebe. We woke up at six this morning. She already, look at that, already fired it up. <laughs> I turned to the side. She had the joint in her mouth, sparking it up. I'm like, what did you make that? She saw last night before going to bed, preparing ahead of time. But uh, today, I want to uh, share a video with you guys that is uh, important because a lot of people are falling for stuff like this, not just in Colombia, but it's happening also in Mexico. Not Well, this story happens in Mexico, so it's happening everyone and to everyone in different places everywhere so not to everyone but happening in different places everywhere so i'm gonna play the video so you guys can see what's going on and then we'll we'll cover it together <laughs> but all right so this is a news article that uh was not an article but a news story that where a guy went to uh mexico and it's kind of sad what he did so i'm gonna share the entire story real quick um because there's a lot of guys that are so desperate and like even though they're in a relationship or whatever then they're not satisfied in the relationship they seek other they seek something better and mostly it's girls who do this naturally but guys if they love their wife or their girlfriend they will seek sex they won't seek another relation if they really love the girl and there's a difference there so uh let's uh Let's get into this real quick so I could let you guys hear that. We begin here all new at six, a local family desperate for answers after a man moved from North Carolina to Mexico and ended up dead. Frank Maziotti's family believes he was the target of a romance scam. Good evening and thanks for joining us here tonight at six o'clock. I'm Molly Grantham. The romance scam is no different than the Tinder dates in Colombia that they lure you in with a hot girl on the photos and then they drug you in person and kidnap you, and then usually you end up dead. It's very rare that they get to escape alive. Uh, if you've seen their faces and there's guys involved, then you won't normally make it alive. But if it's just the girls and the girls are drugging and robbing you, like the ones in the Tinder scams in Colombia, then a lot of the times these guys just get robbed and then the girls leave because the girls ain't trying to like murder. It's usually the guys that are the ones. Unless the girls accidentally give you too much of the 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 um scopolamine then you die from the over <clears throat> all right so let's uh continue i wanted to uh talk about the romance scam because it's typical you guys gotta watch out uh for you being lured in i'm gonna say this again this is a foundation that i say in a lot of videos but a lot of guys still don't get it and a lot of these things can be prevented if they watched a video like this or someone not not just my stuff but i'm sure there's other guys teaching the same stuff but they're not really explaining it straight up like how I'm saying, like, guys, you got to take a look at yourself. You think a hot girl in another country, a supermodel looking girl or a model looking chick is going to want to be with a dude like you. Take a look at yourself and ask yourself, what do you have to offer? If all you have is money to offer, that's what they're going to take from you. If you ain't good looking, you ain't fucking fit and you ain't got a good personality, then what, what are they going to have to be attracted to or want to be with you? And most of, most of the time, you're going to be older than them. So if you don't got the other stuff that is attractive to a person, then what's going to make them want to be with you? When If they're that attractive, they're going to have options wherever they're at. And they're going to be choosing like the, the chads in their area or chads online, you know? And so it's just most guys will not... <clears throat> All they think about is the girl and thinking that the girl should like them for who they are, which is a fairy tale fantasy. It's just a fantasy, guys. Like these girls, we ain't their first picks. We ain't their second picks. We ain't their third picks. So get that through your head. And like, you know, you're traveling. These girls are online chatting with you. A hot girl is online chatting with you versus chatting with a, a hot Chad that's in their area, a local broke guy or even a local rich guy that's in their area, they got plenty of options. You gotta think about it from a girl's perspective. And a lot of you guys don't think of it from other people's perspectives. You're only thinking of it from your perspective and expecting them to like you. You hear it all the time. I want her to love me for who I am. I want her to be with me because of me, like the real me. But if you're having trouble in your country, you're gonna have trouble in any country. It's the same, it's human nature, it's attraction. Attraction doesn't change no matter what. 
in whatever country you're in. The only thing that changes is the financial uh, reward that they would get for being with you because if your currency is stronger than their currency. And so I want to lay that down because it's just so many foolish, so much foolish thinking. And it happens down here where I'm at too, where the guys just come down. They think just because they cross the border that they're the shit and that every girl's going to be after them. Don't mistake the girl's talking to you for your money saying hey baby whatever whatever and all that sweet talk and them wanting to be with you or them wanting to go upstairs and bang you as for them wanting to be with you it's no different how girls mistake when a chad or other guys when lots of guys want to bang the chick the girls mistake the guys wanting to bang them for the guys wanting to marry them the guys don't want to marry them they just want to bang them and the girls think that they have all these options for guys that want to marry them and that's what ends up having them get into their 30s, 40s, 50s alone because they keep looking for better and they keep thinking that just because all these guys are messaging them and wanting to have sex with them, they mistake that for guys wanting to be in a relationship with them. But it's not the case, guys. And so it's the same thing. When you when you go to places or you see girls, uh, hot girls approaching you, talking to you, that ain't normal. It ain't going to happen in the real world. It only happens in fairy tale lands, which is like in whorehouses, working girls, online dating because it's like most of it's a scam and so that's why i wanted to bring up this point so you guys can think about it throughout this and put yourself in the position take a step back now if ever you're put in any kind of position where you think oh man this girl must really like me you know and especially if you're awkward you're old and you're out of shape and you got nothing to talk about you don't speak their language and on top of that you're not even well off so what do you have to offer like even you wouldn't want to hang out with a dude like you. So what makes you think hot chicks are going to want to hang out with you or successful guys? And if that's not already what your life is, don't expect it to happen. And I keep trying to teach that to you guys, but it seems like a lot of guys don't understand this basic fundamental lesson, which is the foundation for, for that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, like, like I said, these girls, I'm not their first pick. They all got their broke boys that they would like rather the handsome broke boys that they would rather be with that are local, their age, their language, their similar backgrounds, they can communicate. And on top of that, the boy is like super good looking to them. And so that's gonna be always be their first pick. And that's why I always call them the broke boy. Me and my other friend, she knows now the term broke boy. And uh, we always laugh because she was with me yesterday or not, not yesterday, the other day we went out and uh, I was telling her about the broke boys and she brought up a good point. She's all, she's asking me how the other girls were cause she knows some of them. And I said, oh, you know, the same thing heartbroken over a broke boy, uh, changing their life for a broke boy, uh, you know, lying and being kind of like incarcerated and making sacrifices for the broke boy while still banging other boy, while the other guys and letting the guy abuse them and control them and not let them talk to their friends or whatever. And then she's all, well, you know what? It's the same thing all over. I see it too. She sees it when she works and stuff that the girls, cause the girls that work at the club, she's all the girls work and deal with the older guys to make money to support the broke boy so it's like a cycle and just so they could be with that broke boy and the broke boy offers nothing except for him being handsome and the girl's lizard brain takes over the primitive part of her brain for attraction takes over and she just all common sense goes out the door and whatever common sense thinking that they have they can't think anymore because they're so infatuated and that part of their mind takes over. Instead of thinking logically, they're thinking emotion, and that's their downfall. And then they find out the broke boy has another girl or is banging, even though he said he has doesn't have a have a girl. He has other girls, especially if he's good looking and uh, you know, young and good looking. They got up, so that's what's gonna happen. Um, and they're gonna just lie, whatever. They don't even have to put in effort because the girls are throwing themselves at them. And so if, if you're a, a, a guy with hot girls throwing themselves at you, you're not gonna say no. The majority of guys ain't gonna say no. And that's why guys that are good looking and successful have options and they're not gonna settle for some single mom. Or, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen. The, the guys that are still simps, they're gonna, they're gonna settle because they don't know any better. But the guys that have a lot of experience and are like, won't take shit from no one and won't, won't sacrifice their happiness for anyone kind of like me i won't i won't do it i won't settle for something like that you know if you haven't been through it before then you won't know what to do when you know say you date a single mom and you like really like her you're gonna put up with the kids or do whatever and you're gonna think that this girl's a cat she's not a cat she's a single mom you know and you're gonna have to deal with more problems than you would you would have to deal with if you were just dealing with a girl without kids and so all right so let's get into it i want to uh share this with you while she makes another and uh let's get into this guy's tragic story which 
is a warning for all of you guys. That's why I did this foundational thing ahead of time so you guys can be aware and think about it. Before you go messaging a girl, before you go wasting time online, before you fall for any of these scams, you know, I, I put all these videos out to help you guys so you don't fall for this kind of stuff and also to help you improve your life so you don't have to be doing what a typical desperate guy is doing looking for companionship. So that way, your life will be to a point where it's good and you become attractive to both guys and girls to where people want to be around you people want to be your friend people want to hang out with you and it doesn't matter whether it's a guy or a girl and that's the first part of the equation to where you're going places in life you're ambitious you're working on things you have goals and you're not just a talker you're you're a doer you're you're an action taker not just a talker Talk is cheap, that's why everyone can afford it, everyone can talk, but it's the action takers that are rare, that when you meet people that actually do what they say, or they don't even say shit, they just go and do it. You know, that's what people like, that's what people are attracted to. And so, girls have this sixth sense, guys have it too, but girls have this sixth sense where they can just feel your energy and know if you're real, and like, know if you're bullshit, and know if you're awkward, know if you're weird. It's almost like how the animals sense when there's a predator in the, in the, in the wild. You know, and girls have that sense too, where they can sense like they're a predator, essentially. You know, because you can't, you can't attract them. You're chasing them. So, all right, let's get into this. WBTV's Claire Kopsky is on your side, pushing for answers, questioning officials on both sides of the border about how this could happen. In August, Luis Maziotti received an unexpected phone call. She called me at 10, 18 on a, that Saturday night, August the 12th. And she said, um, Louise, this is Lucia. She said, I don't know how to tell you this, but he, she said, Frankie killed himself. And I, I said, no, what are you talking about? And I just kind of went all to pieces when I realized she was being serious. The call was from her 44-year-old son's new wife in Mexico, Lucia Rodriguez Castellanos. Frank and Lucia got married a year earlier after meeting on an app called Clubhouse. I know he, he loved languages. Clubhouse, I never even heard of that app. Man, where are people finding these apps and finding girls, you know? Like, there's one popping up all, all the time. For It's so lucrative. There's so many desperate guys that these apps are popping up everywhere. Spanish fluently and French and uh, Italian. And so he, he loved to talk to people in different languages, so. Look at that, the guy even spoke Spanish. He spoke different languages. So he's an intelligent guy book-wise, but street-wise, he's not so intelligent. And met Lucia and it was like a fast romance. He divorced his wife of 11 years, paused his local business, sold his home, and made plans to move to Lucia's town in Mexico. The whole thing was troubling to me. Look at that, guys. He was with a wife for 11 years. He stopped his business, sold his house, and went down to Mexico for this girl he met on this dating app. That's, now, what sounds strange to you in that? What sounds suspicious to you in that already? Check out. The whole thing was troubling to me. I didn't want him to go. I, I tried to get him to rethink and give himself time. I told him, I said, Frankie, I have a bad feeling about this. So the guy doesn't look too bad, actually, when you look at his pictures. You know, he doesn't look like an overweight or like an awkward dude. So he had a wife, so he, he had the capability to get girls, but he turned to somewhere where he shouldn't have online. I said, I don't think you should do this. I think you should give yourself time to decide what to do. And he said, well, she keeps telling me how much she loves me and how much she can't live without me. Well, guys, the mom sensed it, that it was already something was up, but he didn't care. He l ignored the red flags and followed his dick instead of his, he followed the little brain instead of the big brain and look what it got him, you know? And when a girl keeps telling you that she can't live without you, what the hell, what girl's gonna say that? If you haven't even met <clears throat> in person, what girl's gonna say that? They're all feeding into the fantasy that you wanna hear, you know? And so, uh, like I said, the mom saw it, but he didn't see it and he just wanted to get laid, you know? He's got phys the physical attraction, uh, is what lured him in. He's my brother, I, you know, I helped raise him. 
Frank's brother, Michael Godfrey, says he believes his brother went to Mexico for love. He was looking for somebody to love him. He went down there for love. So he, he, let's get, let's, let's talk about this, what the brother just said, guys. He, he went down there looking for love, but he was already married for 11 years. So it looks like the love had dried up in his relationship and any typical relationship where the guys are in there for a while, they start to become, uh, the, the, the wife starts to appreciate him less and he doesn't feel valued. The wife may have lost her physical attraction and now uh, he's looking for someone to give him the things he's missing at home and it's typical you're, you're gonna see this a lot of guys are feeling the same thing so i understand what he's feeling and like they're not really talking about how his marriage was with his wife if it was good or bad but after 11 years usually that's uh the case and anybody who's been married for a while knows this to be the commonality of what a happy marriage seems supposedly is as the family tried to make plans to go to mexico to bury him the u.s embassy urged them not to come it was just way too dangerous for Americans to come there now because uh, a lot of Americans were missing at this point. The U.S. State Department classifies the area where Frank died as a do not travel to place. So oh man, he says Tamaulipas. I know Mexicans that are in America that can't even go back there that have property down there that they can't even go and uh, liquidate because they themselves are saying Tamaulipas is really bad. And he went down to Tamaulipas, so it's kind of crazy, guys. They, they couldn't even go and go to like get his body or bury him. They, they would, the government wouldn't let him, and chances are something might've happened to the family that went down there. And if you go investigating, they don't like when people investigate, you know, like reporters, especially uh, all the reporters end up disappearing or uh, publicly, um, they get shot in public to, to set an example for other reporters reporting on their criminal activity. So that's why there's a lot of reporters that just remain anonymous and they're scared for their lives. And they even ask for the president to protect them when there's death threats, but the president don't do nothing. The they, law enforcement does not do, do anything down here. Law enforcement down here is more of like a cleanup crew. They come after the fact. They don't really do prevention or solve crimes. They just come and clean up the mess that's made once the crime is done. Adding crime and kidnapping risks. Yeah. I would have went there if I could have, but they told us not to. Not only could the family not go to Mexico, they learned Frank's body had already been cremated, despite a law that should have prevented exactly that. It's just something that I just, I feel like I've been in a nightmare. I just can't believe it. The details of Frank's death continue to prove difficult to track down. The US well, let's stop right there, guys. They did a cremation when there's a law that says they can't cremate. So, like I said, the law, there is no law. It's all broken by everyone. And the only people that get fucked by the law down here are the tourists and people with money. Because the criminals are the ones that get to break the law and with impunity. They don't get busted. They can pay their way out. The law is controlled by the cartels and the police are controlled by the cartels. So, you know, if he was uh, in, involved in any kind of cartel stuff, then uh, the cartel would order whatever they order is going to get done. You've seen it in the movies, guys. The movies are kind of based on somewhat some kind of reality, you know. Um, and so it may be exaggerated a little bit, but it's based off some kind of uh, partial reality, kind of see what happened. Like if you're if you're following news in other countries from the local spots that aren't really like in Facebook groups where it's not controlled by a corporation, you can see the real stuff that happened. And I see it all the time. That's why I'm like scared and like more aware and uh, more careful where I go and what time I go and places and stuff, because you can end up at the wrong time, at, at the wrong place at the wrong time and not even be falling to any scam like this, but you just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, which can happen more often in these countries. You know, so you gotta be careful <clears throat> and adjust. I used to go out a lot, but I don't go out a lot just because of that fact. US consulate in Matamoros reports the prosecutor's office in Mexico concluded his death was a suicide. They cite findings of chemicals on his right hand showing it had been used to discharge a firearm and an entrance wound on the right side of his head. However, the uh, suicide, the easiest way to make it, uh, make them stop investigating. So this is a good example, guys. If you die in Mexico, no one's going to do, no one's going to invest. No one's going to come to your rescue if something happens to you. It's the wild west. And it's not just Mexico. It could be any of these countries. No one's going to come to your rescue. That's the scary part. <clears throat> you know, may look all fun and everything. And then 
until problems happen where you're left to deal with it on your own and that's the the part that also scares me and like you gotta have your backups to what goes down you gotta run the situation in mind i've been going krav maga sessions now where the teacher he's law enforcement he, um local police local military even the u.s border patrol comes down with him as well he talks about a lot of the stuff going on which you don't really hear about that he's getting insider hearing stuff from insider knowledge from the people that are involved in it right now you know when you hear all that shit it's fucking scary and a lot of people think that just because you don't hear about it doesn't mean it's not happened so they just ignore it and just because they don't hear about the murders or the robberies happening or they don't see it in their immediate vicinity they think that nothing's happening, but it, all this stuff is actually happening, but it just gets suppressed. However, the consular report of death abroad lists Frank's death as an accidental or violent death. I mean, it was horrible to try to look at those pictures that I saw of him, but the way the blood splatters and all that, there's no way he killed himself. That was the hardest thing I've ever done is look at my son like that. I think he was led to believe something that wasn't really true to the heart. While the mystery into how he died may never be solved, the family believes Frank is the victim of a romance scam. It'll never be solved. I just talked about that, guys. If something happens, they'll never, no one, there's so much crimes going on, they don't bother to look. No one's going to investigate. They don't even have enough staff or law enforcement to work on it. They hope Frank's story is a reminder to be cautious of who you meet online. It's a type of scam that the U.S. State Department told me is prevalent in Mexico. If you do decide to travel to meet someone online, Eva Velasquez of the Identity Theft Resource Center says it's best to approach it as if you're meeting a stranger. You are meeting a stranger. What do you mean it's best? Of course it is, but it's such common sense that common sense isn't so common. That's why I'm so against online stuff. You guys don't do any of this online stuff. Like you want to meet girls, the girls like these girls are not online. Let me ask her. Baby, tú tienes una per de, de, uh, como Tinder o algo tú usas? I said no. Guys, you're not going to find these girls there. They already have options in real life. Girl, cool, badass chicks don't need to go online to look for dudes. And if they're there, there's something wrong with them, either mentally, physically, emotionally, or they're there to scam you. Like I said, like hot, cool, dope girls are not going to be online. They're already surrounded by so many options in their real life that they don't got time for that shit. It's also a waste of time for them unless there's something in it for them you know they're, they're that's why i keep telling you guys that online is the biggest waste of time and look what you'll pay the ultimate price by doing that you know like just follow my reverse dating strategy that's even better than online because you're actually getting to enjoy all the things that you would enjoy in a relationship and get the goal guaranteed and get to date it still has its risk if you go out with the girl that you met just met and just because you banged her, maybe you are not good at your your psychological and your personality profiling. Like reading people, you may not be good at reading people. You need to get good at reading people because and sensing people's energy and asking yourself what is in it for them. Why are they hanging out with you? Is it authentic or is there a purpose behind them wanting to hang out with you? Is there another reason that they're wanting to hang out with you when normally they wouldn't hang out with you if you don't have certain things that you have to offer besides money and so <clears throat> these are the things you need to work on so that way uh you can minimize the risk the risk is always going to be there whether you meet them in person or through a friend or uh online or wherever you meet them the risk is there but online is greater so that's why i'm like sharing this with you guys because these news places these other channels that cover this kind of stuff they're not really breaking it down and giving you the non-sugar-coated stuff that you won't think about the things that like i'm trying to make you think about and think about look at things in a different way and so you can see like the stuff that should be common sense that isn't common so you can start seeing it's, it oh i know someone who lives there therefore i don't have to look at all that the only person that can save you is you i just said that it's like the wild west you're on your own and the only person that can uh uh can do it can do anything is you you got to rely on yourself so you need to get some kind of training pay for some courses do self-defense classes go through these seminars for like uh kidnapping and things like that these are the kind of things to help you get more prepared in case if you do partake in traveling abroad or going anywhere, even in your local area, it's good knowledge to have. And the only person that can protect you from them is you. Luis hopes other parents will remind their kids about who they can trust. Just 
love your kids as much as you can and try to stay off the internet meeting people because you don't know what they are and what they've done. The State Department spokesman tells me financial scams are just as prevalent as romance scams in Mexico, often initiated through online postings or unsolicited emails. In addition to romance scams and financial scams, the State Department wants you to be on the lookout for a few other schemes, including money transfers, lucrative sales, grandparent and relative targeting, free trips, luggage, inheritance notices, bank overpayments as well. Now, the Identity Theft Resource Center told me that they are seeing more and more young people fall for these scams, which is the opposite of most of what most people would think. But data shows that because the youth grew up in such a digital world, they are often the ones that are actually falling for these tricks. I'm going to tell you why. Young people are stupid. They're all ad addicted to their phones. They got no real life experience. They're not out there in the real world and dealing face to face and feeling human energy and psychology and all that stuff. So they just like do everything online on their st on their phones. They're all glued to their phones. Today's youth are lost. Fucking dumb as fuck. They don't know shit nowadays. <laughs> that's the reason why. I think that's the end of the story. They're more trusting of things exactly. online because it's all you've ever really known. Exactly. Hola, what's up guys? Had to interrupt the video to bring you guys an important announcement. A lot of you guys watching, I've been receiving tons of messages from guys that are virgins, that haven't been laid yet, that want to get laid, and maybe guys that have already been laid, but they're not getting access to girls where they're at, so they want to get laid still. You know, these guys are getting taken advantage of, reaching out to escort strippers or whatever they're reaching out to, wasting all that money. If you really need help that bad and you want to do it that bad, reach out, I'll help you guys. We'll discuss whatever it is that you're facing. It can also be other stuff. Maybe you're heartbroken and need advice or need something to help you get over that heartbreak. Maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend where you feel like she's cheating on you or things just aren't the same. I can help you analyze the situation and get over it. I've gone through a lot of relationships already with girls from all over the place, all over the world, different places. You know, so I've seen all the things that they do. Been in long-term relationships, so I know what a marriage feels like. I know what divorce feels like. I haven't been divorced, but in a long-term relationship to where I felt like divorce pretty much and so I've seen a lot of people go through it and I can help you guys that are going through these type of things too if you need help maybe like going to another place uh, I can put you in touch with people in different places in part of my network or find people that are viewers as well that can help that's why I'm doing this to get the word across of the things that I can help you with not just that if you own a business and you're accepting credit cards and you're still paying the fees you don't got to pay the fees no more you're pretty much just throwing your money in the trash you can better off just using it on yourself splurging taking a vacation enjoying like this in a pool in a tropical location somewhere where there's nothing but palm trees around and tropical birds that kind of stuff where the weather's perfect you could be doing that instead or if you know have some friends or family that own businesses that are still wasting their money paying the fees now i'll be able to help so i can help with a number of things and i'll be glad to you know put you guys in the right direction same thing if you guys got want to go to costa rica i got friends out there cancun i got friends down there philippines i got a lot of friends out there so you guys need help on any of that stuff reach out I'll be glad to put you in contact so that way you can have a better experience all around. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Adios. All right. Yeah, that's the last of it. I got some uh, uh, comments that I'm going to read you guys from this so you guys can uh, we can follow along. It says it's very sad abandoning the, the a loving wife of 11 years to choose a romance scam that will never work out well. In this case, either life insurance or organ sale. All right, he didn't go for love, he went for a fantasy. And that's pretty much true. Guys, you don't need to go and fall for these romance stuff. And here's another thing, like, a lot of guys will say, oh, I don't pay, like, when when I tell them, hey, you should just go to the club if that's what you're, no, I don't pay for pussy. Well, he just paid the most expensive price you could ever pay for getting, looking for real connection and real love, which didn't exist. He would have been better off to go bang a chick, a hot, super hot chick, and just stay with his wife and kids and do his business, go back to life, satisfy the urge that he had, and just go back to his life, you know? But, like I said, I don't know how life was with his wife and his kid and his business over back home. Maybe he just wanted to escape and he felt like, shit, he found his escape, his escape route, and he went and took the opportunity, but it... 
if it's too good to be true, it usually is. It's just like the easiest rule of thumb. So, like I said, your fantasies can be fulfilled in safer places, safer environments where you could just get the job done and get back to your life and uh, focus on your stuff you're building and if you got a wife and kids, handle your responsibilities, you know? You know, I appreciate the outreach, the comments and the emails. And if you can, share these videos with a friend or also at the very least, uh, just give it a like. It doesn't cost anything or take more than a half a second for you to click the like because then what it does when you click like, YouTube will suggest the videos to other people that have the same interests as you. So that's kind of like how the whole algorithm works. And so that, that goes and helps a lot too, you know? Like if you're not writing comments or sending donations or whatever, pressing like and writing a comment helps greatly as well, you know, because then YouTube will know that you find it useful and that it'll start suggesting, it'll know that it's a legit video that can help somebody and it'll start suggesting it to other people that are kind of like watching the same things that you're watching. If someone tells you they can't live without you, especially if it's someone you've met, recently met, get far away from that person. It's an emotional weapon unstable and malicious people use all the time please protect yourself and never fall for this sad for the family's loss yeah guys who's gonna tell you that they can't live without you and they barely even know you come on like this like the red flags are all over the place and it's so easy for everyone to see except when you're blinded when your dick or your heart is the one controlling your instead of the logic OMG, he turned his back to a beautiful wife he had and a loving wife and thriving business only to end up dead. What a bad choice, dude. Obviously, we don't know, and it's tragic however this played out, but for someone to leave a partner after 11 years, leave his business, and run off with a stranger in another country comes off as mentally, emotionally unstable person. Prayers for the family. Not just an unstable person, but a person that's not aware and a person that's desperate, you know, that that's... Um, and selfish at the same time. You know, he didn't care about his responsibilities. He just left for a girl and moved. What was he planning to do with his responsibilities back home? The only unfortunate part is a wife of 11 years won't get anything in his death. She spent 11 years with a man who was clearly cheating on her with women online, met one who was probably in her 20s and decided to risk it all. He broke up his family for an online scam. True. Divorcing your wife of 11 years, pausing your business and selling your house over someone you met on the internet. I guess life is full of choices and you made the wrong one, buddy. I'm so sorry for the loss of his precious American son. The first mistake was leaving his wife of 11 years for a stranger in Mexico. I do believe in my heart that this was not a suicide but murder, which is why he was cremated right away. I feel very sorry for his family. Hopefully he rests in peace. People that go looking for love, even when they already have these people are missing something inside themselves. Can't be filled by others. What a tragedy for all the poor mom. The dude was 44, dumped his wife looking for love online. Obviously not a very wise man. So true. I feel sorry for his family, but I don't have much sympathy, sympathy for a man who leaves his wife of 11 years for a fling. Me either. My heart goes out to the mother and family. So many people choose these websites as a way to meet people. Most often is a scam. Yep. This is why you need to teach your children critical thinking skills every... Every step he took was obviously an Ill illogical one, yet he did it anyway. It's not the internet that's the problem, it's the lack of crit critical thinking, situational awareness, and basic stranger danger rules. Come on, people. How do you not see it? How? I just told you how they can't see it. They're thinking with their dick, not with their... not with. They're thinking with the little head, not the big head. Leaving your wife, closing your business, moving to a foreign country known for violence. Do you hear it? It's one of the most neon sign cautionary deaths I've heard in a while. And I hope people take heed. It's your responsibility to ask questions and think deeper than the fantasy on the internet. You can't always blame an inanimate thing like the internet, especially full, full, as a full-grown adult. Please think deeper than the surface. Very good. As a mother of sons, I'm sorry for your loss. My oldest son went down to Kabul for a wedding. When they left the airport on the way to the resort, he said he saw one of the most beautiful women he's ever seen. And she basically was trying to entice men to talk to her, I presume. He said he was tempted to talk to her, and I told him, yeah, you would probably be dead by now. Mexico is one place you don't mess with. Even the police are corrupt. Yep, it's true. A friend of mine lost her dad to a predatory romance scam in Mexico where he was murdered for his money. She worked. She has worked for years at 
convicting convicting the women involved and finally did get the woman behind bars and it's making and is making a documentary about it unfortunately this is not uncommon you just don't hear about it guys it's happening all the time that's why these websites are popping up guys a lot of desperate guys and like it's society like it's so hard to find quality girls and date like it's not the way it used to be when our parents and the grandparents were where you can be with someone from your high school sweetheart until the day you die that doesn't happen no more very rarely you know and that's what guys still want people still want that but the way that women are now is just that they're the social social media and online has exposed how female nature is and how they're always looking for the better option and never satisfied with what they have sounds like a similar story that happened to my son's friend the only difference is they took his organs and the parents begged for information, yet the authorities made them pay before releasing any information and also to release his ma remains back into their custody. I cannot imagine the mental torment and devastation of having to go through something like this. Look, the authorities made him even pay. It's all about money, guys. For information, they had to pay for information which should be, you know, released to the family. I can understand paying for the remains, but the paying for the information too? Man. How can you be looking for love and you already have a wife? Prayers for his family who are left behind. This is a devastating story. Unfortunately, meeting someone in person does not guarantee they're a good person either. It's unfortunate that these things happen more prevalently when you meet someone online, but you just have to be as careful and cautious when you meet someone in person. So true. No matter where you meet them, guys. Don't, don't let your guard down, no matter what. His mother was 100% correct when she advised people to stay off the internet trying to meet people because you don't know who they are. Years ago, I had a profile on a dating site, but after seeing a news story about a serial killer meeting women online, I quickly took my profile down. Thank goodness I was wise enough to understand that online dating is not a good option at all. It's best to meet people through friends and family or while you're engaging in a hobby, and even then you have to be very careful and be sure to do a, bit, a thorough background check. Yeah, that's what I taught in like uh, some other videos, like doing stuff you love, meeting people through people that you know that are trustworthy, that minimizes the risk and gives you a better connection overall. So that's why I like the comment that this person wrote. All right, let's get to the next one. If you want unconditional love, get yourself a dog. It doesn't matter how the relationship he had with his wife was. He risked his life chasing after some internet app pipe dream and lost it all due to his own choices. I grew up in Santa Fe, Texas. I remember when Mark Kilroy went to Mexico for spring break and never came back. I never felt the desire to F around there and find out. People clamor over that border trying to get out of Mexico. A woman in Mexico will want you to get her to America, not get you to Mexico. Any Texan knows that. That's funny. I've been single for a long time and people ask why. The culture of dating and developing intimate, intimate partnerships has changed so much that navigating the landscape is difficult because there's so much predatory behavior within it. Not to mention the constant changing of definitions of it. It's so exhausting and with romance scamming being a full-time hustle and me falling victim to it, to it once from someone I had none for 13 years. Yeah, it's not enough to be educated or have critical thinking skills anymore. It's gen genuinely hard to discern with so many people misrepresenting themselves with malignant intent. Harsh as it may sound, the wife he left is better off without him. Sounds like the divorced wife he left her for with nothing. He took the house and money to use on a fantasy. Gr greed will turn you out. Now he's dead. And it's kind of like karma if you look at it. They cremated him without asking permission. That's beyond words. So sorry for the family. So much of this is strange. Karma at its finest. Abandoning your wife of 11 years for a complete stranger. Men, you are too easy. It's so true, guys. Men can be got so easy. Like, even me, like... I always think about that, man, so These a lot of these girls could have just gotten me, you know, with all the stuff I've experienced and the, where I've kind of just did stuff carelessly and just kind of like in the cartoons when you see like the dog and then they have the, the smoke of the odor of something cooking and then they start flying with their nose, uh, they're flying through the air with the nose following the, the scent of where the food or the smell of the food is coming from. That's kind of like us with our dicks that our dick just points us in a direction to where the girl is taking us and we're just like, you know, in this hypnotic state, not even thinking of what's around you and you just follow blindly. And so it's kind of understandable, like when people say men are too easy, it's so true. 
I bet he was yelling for his mom and his wife when he met Jose at the airport. But Buddy should have stayed loyal to his first and only real love. Never let the little head make life choices. Let me correct, he was looking for someone to love him with. He was looking for someone more attractive. Foolishness, selfishness. Yep, so true. That's it, guys. So that's the end of the story. Hope you guys learned and got some started thinking about certain things maybe you saw yourself you realize some of the stuff you were doing was foolish and you won't make these same mistakes because it only takes one time that you're wrong and it could really cost you everything in life including your life so all right that's it for now hope you guys enjoyed we'll talk to you soon have a great rest of your day adios pura vida you say adios baby adios. bye <laughs> guys it's finally here i got the jedi group open and I got a website put together for all you guys that can reach out to me instead of sending me an email. The website's 420john69.com and pretty much everything you need is listed out on the links above and the links of links below. So if you're interested in a Jedi group, if you're interested in uh, getting help with a trip, relationship advice, credit card service, real estate, affiliate programs, pretty much anything that I'm talking about, business, investments, it's all on the website, so that way you guys can help me help you a lot faster. That way I don't miss out on any of the emails, and it'll help me stay in touch with you guys. Even if something happens to the channel or the Instagram or whatever, if everything gets taken down or blocked by the platforms, I'll still have a way to get in touch with you guys. So go ahead and go to the website and pick whichever link that you need help on and fill out the information, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios, pura vida. All right, guys, so... I'm putting together these groups, the my Jedi Master Inner Circle. So there's gonna be two levels to it. You're gonna have the Jedi Masters, which are the guys that are making 100K or more per year, at least, and have been well-traveled, have a lot of experience, and know of different places that we can go to experience and find beautiful girls and be able to share amongst everyone and give advice to other people as well. And then we're also gonna have the young Jedis that maybe aren't as experienced or just starting out in life or are young and don't really have much money, but they wanna live this lifestyle. They're being inspired and they wanna start and learn and be able to communicate with each other. So that'll be the second level. And of course the Jedi Master level can will be in both so that you'll have the Jedi Masters also helping the young Jedis by answering questions uh, for people that are new and then the Jedi Masters, what we're gonna do is have like trips maybe once a year where all of us Jedi Masters come together and have go to a destination where we'll be able to experience all of this together and share and network and share financial advice, how to make money. It'll be how to make money, how to deal with breakups, how to meet girls, pretty much everything that you're seeing on my, vid my videos that I'm teaching, we'll be able to network and do it in person and put, put together these groups and meetings for people and kind of be my, me as the connector, connecting all of you guys together because I'm getting all these messages from people from all walks of life in different parts of the world. And a lot of you guys tell me that you don't have anyone to share these experiences with or share your stories and share all the knowledge that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years. And once you communicate with me, it's like you're spilling your entire story because you're so excited to tell someone finally because there's no one else you can take. You can't tell your friends, can't tell your family, and there's no one you can ask questions. There's no one you can uh, share these intimate details with. And so I wanna bring you guys together with other like-minded people that are watching my videos and kind of wanna live this lifestyle as well. And let me know which Jedi master uh, or Jedi part level in the inner circle that you wanna be in. There's gonna be either the young Jedi or the Jedi masters. And the Jedi masters is gonna be 500 for you guys to join that's the, the screening process and then we got the young jedis for 50 bucks that way it's affordable and the 500 is to screen out obviously if you're doing well 500 isn't much and then it keeps out the people that aren't serious it's kind of like the how to weed out the people that aren't really real and of course there's going to be moderation and there's going to be like con content moderation where i moderate who gets in and interview the people that want to come in to make sure they're real and that way everyone that's in the group is actually there because they want to be and that they share this similar outlook on life and want to live this type of life and level up even more make more connections make more friends kind of like me and Tim the 72 year old that you've been seeing interview and other people you haven't seen in my videos 
uh, that I hang out with. It'll be kind of like being into the inner circle and make, make these kind of bonds that will last a lifetime and these kind of memories that we can share together and have some awesome adventures together. You guys will be invited once you pay the entrance fee and then we'll get you in. All right, guys, that's it. Adios, pura vida. You say adios, baby. Adios. Uh, <laughs> bye. Well, like, guys, if you uh, coming down here to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, I have friends down here as well that can take care of stuff. If you're heading down to Costa Rica, I've got friends in Costa Rica that can help take care of the stuff, you know, help uh, assist with transportation and activities and lodging and things like that. And then the business that helped me live this life is the credit card service business. So if you own a business and you're still paying the credit card fees, you don't have to do that anymore. Stop wasting your money. To be enjoying it every month instead of like whatever you're paying to the bank a thousand two thousand to the bank every month you take it and go on a vacation look at the ocean how beautiful it is down here and the weather is perfect it's so early in the morning i'm already sweating it's tropical and like uh, people are swimming down there if you could see and I, the only thing i wish that was down here is the that there was more waves but like i said if you own a business uh you don't have to pay for the fees you can use it for vacation take your family out reinvest in your business or whatever it is you want to do on with it. It's just, it's way better than wasting it, paying it to the bank and getting nothing in return. So that's it. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Adios.